surely the key takeaways from the great panel we had are related to how harmonization um, has become more difficult within time, but still how it is extremely important to all services. So everybody that was there agreed as panelists. Um, what remained as kind of the biggest debate was the role of new technologies when it comes to spectrum management um, and the way to balance protection and unlocking new possibilities. So that's what is beautiful about harmonization and the ITU work because it, it creates a balance to guarantee protection, but also create new possibilities to connect more people with better quality of service and lower costs. So, so we understand new technologies are part of the process, but they do not substitute the exclusive licenses and additional spectrum to mobile operators and of course the future of connectivity. Yeah, there is um, no doubt of the immense work done within the ITU on harmonization and how it has played an indignably important role in supporting the mobile industry to connect 5.2 billion people today. So um, spectrum harmonization sets the scene for investment industrial planning and it also designs the present and the future of the ecosystem. So reflects years of research and work and representing a major agreement among different administrations globally, regionally and all the other stakeholders related to the process of harmonization. And it directly um, impacts users, guaranteeing economies of scale, as I mentioned before, lower prices, possibility of better services and surely avoiding interferences, not just within services, but also in borders. So at the same time, again, I can't deny that harmonization has become more difficult to achieve uh, as the spectrum remains as cost resource. Finding available exact ranges to improve connectivity in every corner of the world is bigger, but it's not an impossible challenge to face. Given there is limited supply of spectrum, as I, as I mentioned before, it is vital that governments and regulators primary goal is to ensure it is awarded uh, to who will use it most efficiently in order to support affordable, high quality mobile services. So and in, in easy words, bringing the most socioeconomic benefits. Um, Licensed spectrum has been central to the major global success of mobile services. Without licensed spectrum, exclusive licensed spectrum, the mobile operators would not have been able to connect those 5.2 billion people I mentioned. Um, and without access to the right amount of exclusively licensed spectrum in low, mid and high bands, um, there, there is no way we can unlock the full potential of 5G, for example. So we did a research with Colago Consulting this 2021, especially on mid-bands, and the results show that two gigahertz of mid-band spectrum on average will be needed in every country of the world in order to fulfill all the IMT 2020 requirements. And uh, at the same time, we still suggest that governments make sure that at this moment, so immediately, 100 megahertz, of spectrum and mid bands are available to operators by operator at this moment. And whenever it comes to higher bands, such as millimeter waves, 800 to one gigahertz. Uh, one other uh, question on what the point is about spectrum costs. So the spectrum cost is still a major problem and a major concern. Uh, and it has become very clear on the impact of high spectrum prices. Our GSMAI researchers uh, have clear evidence that high spectrum prices negatively impact consumers uh, with slower network rollouts, reduced quality of service and poor mobile coverage. So again, the importance of licensed spectrum doesn't mean there isn't room for new approaches of spectrum management. Uh, with the help of new technologies, they can surely play a complementary role, uh, but any implementation should be carefully considered in order to understand the impacts for the operators, for the other services and the users. So, for example, sharing is becoming more and more on the radar, and we know that, but its challenges still need uh, to take this into consideration. Uh, and also understanding that it does not substitute license spectrum. But things change and technology is there for, to support us for sure. Mm -hmm. 
I, I would say that all services have the same goal of bringing a portfolio of completely different benefits to society and together they create this socioeconomic benefit that we always talk about. Um, and whenever it comes to the decision or the on the usage of spectrum, it comes to the point where we need to think about those socioeconomic benefits and what socioeconomic benefits those services will bring and how they can move to a different band or still be used in, a, in the same band uh, via any type of coexistence measures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the mobile industry has a long history of working with other tech industries and rolling out networks alongside with all the technologies. Well, while at the same time maximizing those socioeconomic benefits I was mentioning. So I believe that working together uh, I hope that we can continue to strike this balance between enabling exciting new opportunities of 5G and also protecting and continuing the existing services for sure. Of course, collaboration has always been part of the recipe for success for the telecom sector, especially whenever it comes to ITU. That's, that's where we have uh, we, we, we can see this recipe working perfectly. So as countries reach that post-COVID economic recovery, now it is the time to direct digital policy and reshape telecom regulations driving growth in order to encourage innovation, and extend the benefits of connecting everyone. Uh, and of course, we can do this all together. So ITU Digital World is therefore one of the most important platforms for those joint discussions. And hopefully we can be together in person next year to expand and do more and more on this platform that ITU Digital World uh, brings to us.